have you ever wondered what is the next book that I'm going to read? I know I certainly have. Nowadays, I've been going through books really quickly. And so I'm always looking for the next book to read. And I love paperback. And so I thought I'd do a different type of video today. And it is a book review. And the first book I'm going to do a book review on is called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And I'll also do a couple more book reviews in the future if you guys like this. So this is the book that I have. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki is the author. And I definitely like this size of the book. And I prefer a paperback over anything because it's really easy to transport and, you know, throw it in my purse or read it before bed. So this is the first book that we're going to do the book review on. And I would definitely categorize this into like the personal finance type book. I believe that everyone should probably read this at least once in their lives. It is that good. And it's not like a hard read, although it does look a little thick. It's just it's just a pretty simple, straightforward read. He has a, a bit of a story that he tells as we begin the book. And then he expands on different personal like finance themes and topics throughout the book. So I want to highlight a couple of things that I saw from this book that I'd like to draw out. I believe the main overarching theme of this book can be boiled down into two statements. So the first statement is, I can't afford this. And the st second statement is more of a question of how can I afford this? And this makes me consider the mentality of affordability, especially where our culture is today. I also think that there's another underlying theme of resourcefulness in this book, which makes me think about how we take care of our things and how we use the things that we already have and to like repurpose into other things. So let me give you kind of an example. Let's say I have a flower pot that I'm just not using for flowers anymore. Instead of donating that or trashing it, what can I do with this so that it is still useful? So that kind of resourcefulness, I feel like is also like an underlying theme in this book. So there's a couple of frames of thought that the author draws out into his book. And let me point those out for you. So the first frame of thinking when it comes to his personal finance belief is that financial intelligence should be taught at a young age. And I couldn't agree with this more. It makes so much sense that you would start introducing financial intelligence concepts to kids as they're growing up, especially because financial intelligence is not dis discussed in schools and it has more people drowning in debt than ever before and not earning enough income to cover daily expenses as well as future expenses. So I think it would go a long way to start teaching financial intelligence as early as possible. Modern day marketing against our culture nowadays has us thinking certain ways about like what we need. And that's not necessarily inherently wrong, but it's also not doing us any good or taking our future into consideration. So this frame of thought is actually so strong throughout the book, it almost feels repetitive. The second frame of thought is the idea of creating wealth. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. The idea of creating wealth that replenishes itself. So I know that might not make much sense in this current moment, but I definitely encourage you to read this book to understand what he's talking about because he talks in detail about like creating your financial... <laughs> sorry, creating your own financial statement. So like your own balance sheet and your own income statement personally, um, not for a business, but just for yourself. And when it comes to replenishing wealth, he talks a lot about real estate and investments. And those are things that I'm not going to get into because that is just not my expertise. Thankfully, there are professionals that are out there that actually do that. So again, read the book in order to understand like that whole frame of thought as far as creating wealth that replenishes itself. Now, I want to end this book review on just a note that I feel like is is really urgent and telling the story of this book. And I'm not trying to give anything away, but I'm just going to read a little bit of a snippet to you. And this is found on page 57. To spend your life living in fear, never exploring your dreams is cruel. To work hard for money, thinking that it will buy you things that will make you happy is also cruel. 
To wake up in the middle of the night terrified about paying bills is a horrible way to live. To live a life dictated by the size of a paycheck is not really living a life. Thinking that a job makes you secure is lying to yourself. Please don't let money ruin your life. So I'm going to end it there. If you guys have any questions, thoughts, comments on the book, if you've already read it, feel free to leave that down in the comments below and make sure to stay tuned for my next book review. I'm going to be doing one on how to say anything to anyone and also on one called Do It Scared. And so make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel so you are the first to know of new YouTube videos. And also check out my newsletter. It comes out weekly and is a little bit of a recap for you and delivered straight to your inbox. Thank you for watching friends. I'll see you guys next time.